Hello everyone! Today's video is going to explain how to efficiently spend your blood points in the blood web, as well as explain some mechanics of the entity and how it works. But as always, you know that videos take time and effort, so please give it a like and if you enjoy the content, consider subscribing. Ok, let's begin. The blood web is a place where you as a player buy items, offerings, add-ons and perks by spending blood points. The price of everything in the blood web is directly tied to the rarity, which is indicated by the color. Brown for common, yellow for uncommon, green for rare, purple for very rare, and red for ultra rare. The further you progress towards level 50, which is the maximum level, and the level at which you can prestige your character, the more costly and complicated the blood web gets. Now let's start with a few simple fundamentals of the entity and the blood web. There are three layers of the blood web, innermost, middle and the outer. The first move that the entity does will be directed at the outer layers. But what's the entity in the blood web, you may ask? The entity in the blood web is an additional factor that takes away your nodes. The entity only appears after level 9 and will appear only after you take 5 nodes. Now there is an exception to this rule. If you have 2 or more perks in the blood web and manage to take it in less than 5 nodes, the entity will not only appear but will immediately take away one other perk from the blood web. After taking one of your nodes, the entity has to collect those that are connected, but it'll for the most part prefer the outermost ones. As you can see, the trickiest part of the managing your blood web is predicting the entity. So, let's analyze a few examples. Here's a level 45 blood web, but before we begin analyzing, if you want to get the maximum out of these, pause the video when the new example appears to first think what you would do in the situation. Alright, let's continue. The first thing that we notice in this particular blood web is that quite a big chunk of it is only connected by a single line. So, if the entity were to cut into that single node, which is the connecting point, everything would become inaccessible to us. Hence, everything that's blocked off would get devoured by the entity. Also, the big chunk is connected to the smaller chunk, which still has quite a high price. If I wasn't interested in the perk, I would leave it for it to be cut off by the entity too. Here is another high-level blood web, and immediately your eye is caught by this corner. You disgust me! So, in this web, I'll be showing an example of an additional little rule that sometimes comes into play. Basically, if the entity were to end the web by devouring more than a single node, it will not do so. As you can see, this is an example, and if we were to use that rule to our advantage here, we would have went for the brown node which would have saved us a bit. I know it's only a thousand, but these add up over time, believe me or not. There's a strange low-level blood web, which spawned the perk Hex Ruin on the middle layer. When usually if there are outer layers available in the same direction, it'll spawn it there. As we can see in this example, the perk rule, which is whenever you take a perk the entity will take a perk, has priority over other rules, like the outermost layer priority rule. And this peculiar example happens to show it perfectly. Alright, here are some more advanced tips and rules. The rule of even and odd numbers, as I call it, is whenever there is an even amount of nodes left when the entity is present, letting the entity take two nodes with one move will not be beneficial. But if there is an odd number of nodes left, it's very beneficial. An advanced tip for prestiging a character would be to sometimes, or even most of the time, skip perks. If you're going to prestige a character thrice, you might as well skip a few perks until you're prestige 3, unless they'll play a significant role when you'll be spending your offerings that increase your blood points substantially. Also a little advice is to always use offerings like cakes and bloody parties before prestiging, do not waste them because they're the most efficient way to farm blood points. My last tip would be for you to understand that the entity is chaotic, and if there are nodes on a similar layer, it will take a random one. 
I was always wondering if how it was programmed entailed some kind of mechanism of priorities for nodes, but the simple rules mentioned above are all there is to it, even if not, we don't have a way to know. But I've had a bug where I spent about 50k on the blood web, and then that by daylight crashed, resetting my blood web and giving me my 50k back. And the entity took a few different turns, which led to a different outcome, even though I was doing everything the same way. So here's that. With a bit of practice you can easily become accustomed to how the entity and the blood web works, even though this might be a bit much at first. Alright, tell me in the comments if there's anything interesting I didn't mention about the entity or the blood web, or just come say what's the tip you think is the most useful out of all of these. I'll try my best to reply. With that, thank you for watching, have a great day.